यशोदनंदन व्रज जनरंजन यामुन तिरावन यशोदनंदन व्रज जनरंजन यामुन तिरावन हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे
We are reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 4, Chapter number 31. Narada instructs Prachetas. And today we are going to see the last three shlokas of this chapter. So, shloka number 29. Vidura Vacha Soya Madhya Maha Yogin Bhavata Karunatmana Darshitas Tamasa Paro Yatra Kinchana Goharihi 
సోయం అత్యమహాయోగిం కరుణాత్మన దర్శితస్తమస పారో యత్రాకించనగోహరి సోయమద్యమహాయోగి కరుణాత్మన దర్శితస్తమస పారో దర్శితో మిని విదురహ వాచ విదుర సెడ్ సహ దాట్ అయం దిస్ అద్య టుడే మహాయోగి ఓ గ్రేట్ మిస్టిక్ భవత బై యూ కరుణ ఆత్మన మోస్ట్ మోసిఫుల్ దర్శిత ఐ హ్యావ్ బీన్ షోన్ తమస ఆఫ్ దార్క్నెస్ పార ది అదర్ సైడ్ యత్ర అకించనగ అప్రోచబుల్ బై మెటీరియలి ఫ్రీ హరి ద సుప్రీం పర్సనాలిటీ ఆఫ్ కాడెట్ ట్రాన్స్లేషన్ అండ్ పర్పోర్ట్ బై హిస్టర్ అండ్ గ్రేస్ ఏసీ భక్తివేదాంత స్వామి మహారాజ్ శ్రీల ప్రభుపాద్ జయ శ్రీల ప్రభుపాద్ Vidura said, O great mystic, O greatest of all devotees, by your costless mercy, I have been shown the path of liberation from this, dark, uh, from this world of darkness. By following this path, a person liberated from the material world can return home back to God. Purport, this material world is called Tamaha, dark, and spiritual world is called light. the vedas enjoin that everyone should try to get out of the darkness and go to the kingdom of light information of that kingdom of light can be attained through the mercy of a self realized soul one also has to get rid of all material desires as soon as one frees himself from material desires and associate with a liberated person the path back home back to god is clear om atyana timirandasya jnana anjana shalakaya చక్షురుమీలితమేన తస్మై శ్రీగురవే నమ శ్రీ చైతన్య మనోభీష్ట స్థాపిత మే నూతలే స్వయం రూప కదామహ్యం దాతి స్వపదాంతికం వందేహం శ్రీగురో శ్రీయుత పదకమలం శ్రీగురోన్ వైష్ణవాంశ శ్రీరూపం సాగ్రజాత సహగణ రఘునాథాన్విం తం సజీవం సాద్వైతం సావదూతం పరిజన సహితం కృష్ణ చైతన్య దేవం శ్రీరాధాకృష్ణపాదాన్ సహగుణాదళితా శ్రీ విశాఖాన్విత్య నమో విష్ణుపాదాయ కృష్ణప్రేష్టాయ భూతలే శ్రీమతే భక్తివేదాంత స్వామిన్ని నామినే నమస్తే సారస్వతి దేవే గౌరవాని ప్రచారిణే నిర్విశేష శూన్యవాది పాశ్చాత్య దేశతారిణే హే కృష్ణ కరుణా సింధో దీనబంధో జగత్పతే గోపేష గోపికా కాంత రాధా కాంత నమోస్తే కాంచన గౌరాంగీ రాధే వృందావనేశ్వరి వృషభానుసుతే దేవి పరమామి హరి ప్రియే వాంఛా కల్పతరుభ్యశ్చ కృపా సింధుభ్యవచ పతి పావనేభ్యో వైష్ణవేభ్యో నమో నమ జయ శ్రీ కృష్ణ చైతన్య ప్రభూ నిత్యానంద శ్రీ అద్వైత గదాగర శ్రీవాసాది గౌరభక్త బృంద 
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा सो हियर वी सी दैट द प्रचतास नाइस इंस्ट्रक्शंस टू प्रचतास वर गिवन बाय नारद मुनि एंड देन आफ्टर डिस्कसिंग दिस होल टॉपिक यू नो दिस होल टॉपिक वाज डिस्कस्ड बिटवीन विदुरा एंड मैत्रेय एंड देन लाइक विदुरा इज नाउ वेरी हैप्पी and uh, he is um, like today you no know, he is mentioning soyam adya mahayogin bhavata karunatmana darshitas tamasa paro yatra kinchana gohari so he is mentioning that uh, you no know, i am very very grateful to you and uh, you have literally given me the darshan of that karunatmana the most merciful person so and it is very interesting to see how the word to word and then the translation is given so in word to word it is a very clear this one darshitah means i have been shown no like uh, i have i have been given the darshan of and uh, in the translation it is mentioned that uh, like uh, i have been shown the path of liberation from this material world and uh, no like here we see the tamasah par so that is like beyond the material existence so like uh, the supreme personality of god it you know is really very Uh, amazing personality who is beyond the modes of material nature and one can get the darshan of that supreme personality of god it so by approaching a self realized person so as it is mentioned in bhagavad gita right so a self realized person can you know give the darshan of that supreme personality of god it because he himself has seen the truth you no know, he himself has taken the darshan of the lord so now uh, yeah this topic we have discussed but still it is worth discussing this point so what does it mean you know having darshan of the lord so like uh, generally people have the idea that have you seen the god you no know? like they challenge devotees and you no know, they have challenged propad also in different times he has told different things so one time like you know propad told like no i have no i am seeing god but you are coming in between <laughs> you know so like that also you no know, propad has given answer but see that uh, darshan of the lord we need to know like how to take darshan of the lord so propad in one lecture he mentions that we have uh, five knowledge acquiring senses you no know? like uh, that is eyes nose uh, you no know? then the tongue then skin and then ears and things like that so through which we can actually get knowledge through which we can actually have uh, understanding of the unknown you know? so now all of the information that comes through this is called a darshan you no know? is called a way of understanding the things that we don't know right so now why do we give so much of importance to the eyes you know propad actually uh, puts this challenge why do we give so much importance to the eyes so actually speaking eyes you no know, we don't have a very good experience of uh, you no know, having things understanding by the eyes so for example a small child like who doesn't have much of education you no know, sees a sun or a moon you no know, like uh, uh, In, in even great personalities like incarnations of the lord also have had this problem you know their mothers used to feed them saying that no i will get that ball to you no moon <laughs> and then uh, so and by cheating they used to feed the child you know so the eyes with the eyes the child is able to see that it is a small circle the moon is a small circle so then after some time the child grows up and then he understands it is quite far away object and then heights and distances he studies in the mathematics uh, no and then like usme pata chalta hai ki like yeah like no it is far away object and it cannot be calculated the size of the object cannot be calculated you know just like that so uh, this with hearing actually comes the understanding so out of the all the forms of understanding of all the forms of gaining the knowledge the ear is considered to be very very important you know so that is why the scriptures are called as darshan and uh, this also like when this discussion is happening uh, so vidura chooses to use this word darshitah tamasa paro so you have given me darshan of that supreme lord who is beyond the material existence so darshan means here to hear about the lord no also it means to hear about the lord so now uh, also the aspect of uh, the lord being beyond the material creation and then he cannot be understood by the material senses no adokshaja adokshaja is the name of the lord so aksha ja aksha is like the eyes and ja means to know know things 
So akshaja means like to know things by the senses. And uh, you know what is a the Lord is described as adokshaja. That means one who cannot be understood by the material senses. So then how can we actually understand the Lord? So the Lord is understood in a different formula. So we have to approach the Lord. You know, through the spiritual master and then we have to render service unto him and when the self-realized soul he becomes pleased you know, he will award the darshan of you know, supreme lord and another shloka we often you know, like uh, discuss about is that um, uh, uh, so shri krishna namadi you no know, like the supreme lord can be understood in the in the way of nama rupa guna and leela and this particular thing no na bhavet grahyam indriyai so we cannot understand by the material senses no by the by our senses we cannot do that and seven mukhe hi jivado no when we render service with the very same senses when we render service to the supreme lord and then swayam evas puratyada it is not that you render service and you can get it no not like that you render service and then by his own will like he will uh, reveal himself right so that is the way of revelation actually and now this revelation can happen in multiple multiple ways actually so by the way of hearing you no know, it is by the way of serving a pure devotee you no know, that's happening and uh, by the way of attending the arati of the lord so like this also we quite often discuss because often we tend to take those things which we are doing on a regular basis as a very very light way you no know, or it becomes a ritualistic mechanical thing. No, why it becomes mechanical? Because like uh, to any activity to become mechanical, there are certain requirements are there. No, if it is fulfilled, then it will become mechanical. No, so we lose focus on why do we do this thing, and we lose focus on what is the potential of this particular activity, how great is this particular activity, and uh, till what extent it can actually help us. And uh, no, these these are all like various things. You no, know, that if we lose focus on, so then immediately it becomes a ritualistic activity. You no, know, like uh, just a routine activity actually. And uh, to actually have uh, to overcome this particular uh, this one, so we need to actually invest proper focus and then proper prayers and then to experience a higher uh, truth. You no, know, Param Drushta Nivartate, the material. Consciousness can only be overcome by having a superior darshan, you no, know, having a higher uh, darshan of an higher existence. So it is very, very essential. You no, know? like if we don't, uh, it is just like, uh, you no, know, somebody, uh, it's, it's uh, like it is mentioned like this that somebody comes into the village and he says that you no, know, a tiger is coming, tiger is coming, and everybody gets fear, and then they like you no, know, uh, go and lock themselves, and after some time they see tiger is not coming. And this guy keeps doing the very same thing, you no, know, every time. And then over a period of time, people lose faith in him. You no, know? so like this guy, even real tiger comes, they, they will never, you know, have belief in that. So in that way, you no, know, we proclaim that bhakti yoga is the easiest process. And by following the principles of bhakti yoga, that is chanting, attending the arati, and singing the bhajans, and you no, know, reading Srimad Bhagavatam, you will be able to. Like Stane Stita Shuti Gatam, Tanuvan Manobir, Ye Prayaso, Ajita Jita, Asi Apita Sri Lokim, right? So we will be able to conquer the Supreme Lord. You will be able to have darshan of the Supreme Lord. So, and devotees keep on doing, you know, one day it is not happening, two days it is not happening, 10 years also it is not happening. After some time, we will start to lose faith, you no, know, on the whole process. So if we don't do, if we don't do the process rightly, then over a period of time, we will come to a state saying that, you no, know, it's not going to happen, no. So that is progressively, there should be some progressive march in the path of Krishna consciousness. So that is when we will be able to keep the faith on, no. Otherwise, we will not be able to keep the faith on. So it is very, very essential. So Param Dushtva, so I'm here, uh, like uh, Vidura is giving the testimony. So this is a very nice, this one, that after hearing the class, no, like uh, stu this one is telling that here at least, like, yeah, Maitreya is a self realized soul and he is also. No Tattva Darshi. So, and uh, he is telling that, uh, no, I have got the Darshan of the Lord. So, no, the speaker can acknowledge. So, in our classes, if somebody says, like, no, <laughs> I myself not got the Darshan, no, what? What you got? <laughs> it is not possible. <laughs> so, like, uh, but 
we should see that this darshan, as we were trying to explain, the darshan happens in not just the eyes. No, it is it happens through like any. It can happen through any of the senses. And uh, the uh, if we follow the etiquettes properly, and if we follow the process of Krishna consciousness properly, and then if we follow the like basic uh, foundational uh, principles of bhakti yoga, so then definitely we will be able to have darshan. No, if not the full feature darshan of the Lord. Like, you know, some blur version of the Lord is definitely possible. So, um, like, um, the aspect of, we uh, keep discussing this point, the aspect of hearing the names of the Lord, you no, know, in a crystal clear way. You no, know, all of us, we know, like, all of us are struggling. And, uh, you know, when we try to attempt, even in this direction, you no, know, we will definitely be able to make some progress. And, uh, like, one very basic, basic principle in uh, the Bhakti Yoga process is that it is not possible by my endeavor. No, it is possible by the grace of the Lord. So it's a very essential principle, right? So till the time we try, you no, know, the try to perfect this process through our endeavor, it's going to be a frustration. And in the material world, we have been trained to do things on our own endeavor and try to do you no know, things based on our capacity and things like that. So, like um, in one of the um, in one of the uh, like sections of Srimad Bhagavatam, which I was read, uh, studying, uh, Prabhupada writes a very nice, uh, uh, this one line, that until unless we actually you know, take shelter of the Lord and we actually depend on the grace of the Lord, we cannot feelingly utter the name of the Lord. You know, it's a very nice statement actually. So it was there in the purport or in the translation itself. You no. Know? So until unless we take that utter shelter of the Lord, so we will not be able to feelingly you know, utter the names of the Lord actually. So it is very, very essential point. So this is like the art of Bhakti Yoga or the training in the Bhakti Yoga is to understand that things are beyond my control. And things are beyond my control. So gross materialism means like people understand that you know, everything is under my control and I can manipulate this material nature. And a level above that is that you know, people understand that this material nature is beyond my control. You know? And they start worshipping material nature, the shaktas. So then after that, like uh, the worshippers of shakti, you no? Know? So they understand the material nature is difficult to you know, control. So, you know, like Mother Durga or uh, the shakti is very, very powerful, you No, know? It's beyond my capacity. So then they are the first level of you no know, religious people. So then after that comes the worship of the shakti man, you no, know, the possessor of all the shaktis, you no? Know? Like it is uh, mentioned that, um, Parashya Shakti, no Vividai Vashruvite, Swabhaviki Jnana Balakriyacha. The Supreme Lord has innumerable energies, no? The material energy, the marginal energy, and the uh, spiritual energy, no? Various different energies the Supreme Lord has. So, to come to the point that He is the ultimate person, no? Who is the energetic and who drives and controls the whole creation. And to come to the point of surrendering to that person, it takes a lot. And then, no? To come to the point of understanding that this person is not just a controller, no, he is also a very, very lovable person. No, he is having no like very wonderful qualities and unlimited pastimes, so which are very, no, very, very attractive to the living entities. So this uh, point of understanding is even more difficult, no, even very, very more difficult. And the uh, like here, two aspects are mentioned. One is the mercy of the self-realized soul, and another is to get rid of the material desires. So two uh, things that Prabhupada is mentioning in the purport. Um, so amongst these two, like standalone, we just try. You no, know, if we just get rid of material desires, you no, know, what is the best that we can attain? If we just get rid of material desires. Uh -huh. So the best that we can attain is Brahman and that too with some grace of the Lord. No, without grace of the Lord, nothing we can get. So then, if we get the mercy of the self realized soul, so then, you know, what is the effect? So it is mentioned that Vasudeva Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayojita Janati Asu Vairagyam Jnanam Chaya So, like, automatically the material desires will go and the attraction towards the Supreme Lord will come. So, everything is possible by this one thing of getting the grace of a self realized person. So, in fact, when Hiranyakashipu was asking, this was a big project, you know, for the teachers of Prahlad and also for Hiranyakashipu. How did this boy got corrupted? You no, know, that was the biggest problem. You know, <laughs> where did these people like, you no, know, 
सब प्रीचिंग बंद कर दिया लाइक नो नो लाइक देर इज नो बेस इज नो डिवोटिस अराउंड लाइक नो कुछ भी नहीं है लाइक एंड हाउ डिड दिस गाय गॉट नो दी अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ कृष्ण कॉन्शियसनेस सो दिस वॉज अ बिग क्वेश्चन नो दैट वॉज देयर एंड दे वर आस्किंग इन वेरियस वेस नो फर्स्ट वेन द टीचर्स एस्ट वॉट डिड प्रहला टोल्ड and there is no consistent answer no every time he is telling different different answer so for devotees it is consistent for non devotees it is not at all consistent <laughs> so like first thing what he told is that no yata brahmayati ayam brahman so like just like a magnet and iron is attract iron is attracted to magnet so in the same way like i am attracted no like i don't know why it is no <laughs> if you ask me how and why like no i don't have any answer <laughs> no i am just attracted so who can ask who can argue anything in this answer you know so nobody can argue anything so then like uh, they got frustrated they tried to beat him and things like that so then they took him to the father and uh, hiranyakashipu asked the same question how did you get this knowledge no how did you become attracted to vishnu so then no pralad is telling see like no people who are too much attached to material things they cannot understand vishnu they are telling like no you are a sense gratifier how can you understand vishnu <laughs> even if i tell you you cannot understand vishnu <laughs> right and then you know he mentions that just like blind men follow another blind man and then fall into the ditch in the same way the whole world is following the path of ignorance and they don't know how to actually you no know, they don't know first of all nate vidu swartha gatim hi vishnu so first of all their real swartha their real self interest is lies in serving vishnu you no know, because real swartha swartha means one's own self interest so like uh, you no know, some people think that swartha means like satisfying the senses you no know? but actually the senses and the body is not we are not the body so it is not actually swartha it is like parartha you no know, it is you no know, satisfying some <laughs> like the material nature and you know, we are not getting satisfied now that's why sense gratification leads to frustration because ultimately i have to become satisfied and the senses are not me you no know? so then swartha is not fulfilled and then some people try to satisfy the mind and still you no know, i am not satisfied as a soul and some people try to satisfy the soul itself but still i am not fully satisfied because the soul of the soul is a super soul the supreme lord krishna right so until unless we go to the point of satisfying the super soul like you know uh, it is like uh, you no know, when we come to the point of satisfying the soul we come to the brahman realization and there we are trying to satisfy the soul but still the soul gets nourishment from some other channel you no know? just like you know the tree the leaf directly you pour the water leaf will not get satisfied you no know? so like you have to pour the water in the root so in the same way like you can come to the point of satisfying the soul also but still it is of no use because you will not get the real nourishment the real nourishment is got when we actually serve the super soul so then like uh, he establishes that nate vidu swartha gatim hi vishnu so like people don't know that real swartha lies in serving vishnu and uh, like uh, without knowing this you no know, common people they just simply fall into the ditch you no know, following the leaders you no know, uncontrolled you no know, leaders sense gratifying leaders like you, you no know, he's telling to hiranyakashipu <laughs> and then finally he says that so naisha matista vadurukra mangam so like it is quoted in the previous shloka no sparsha stana tapa gamo yadartha mahiyasham padarajo visheko nishkinchana nam navinita yavat so by taking the dust of a great personality a self realized personality and then no mahiyasham padarajo abhishekam no like uh, to take uh, means to take the dust of the lotus feet of the lord or or the devotees of the lord no in the head of in one's head so then it brings about all the auspiciousness no it brings about the necessary sukruti to understand further about the supreme personality of god it so without this no without the mercy of a pure devotee of the lord it is not at all possible right so now how do we get you no know, how do we make devotees you no know, we try to train people you no know, in the practice of krishna consciousness and when the boys like when they practice nicely and then they give up the goal of sense gratification they give up the goal of uh, material advancement in terms of karma and then jnana like uh, you no know, give up the goal of uh, this one liberation and then they have the goal just to satisfy and please you no know, shila prabhupad and like satisfy and please you no know, panchatattva and shri shri radha and krishna and they want to do this thing and for that purpose if they step out you no know, everybody who is stepping out like that you no know, they are pure devotees <laughs> pure, pure devotees doesn't mean that we don't have any material desires so pure devotees mean we don't 
have a goal. Uh, we don't have a material goal. No, we have the goal of attaining the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord. So then such a person so is called a pure devotee. And when such a person actually steps out and then you know, he gives the mercy to other people. So in the form of like uh, the people can see him and people can talk to him and things like that. So that makes a lot of difference. And you no, know, the uh, real Sukruti actually gets generated. And when that generation of Sukruti is there, so then you know, they get the seed of devotional service, like the very, very basic seed. So further upgraded seed will be given by the Diksha Guru. <laughs> you know, sometimes like devotees also feel that you no, know, I have connected somebody to Krishna consciousness, like no, Abhi my Guru Bangya. <laughs> so then the problem is that you now when we assume such a big role, like somebody may ask, yeah, this is a very, very uh, like appropriate this one, like uh, definitely this boy who steps out and uh, trying to give the pass to another person. So definitely he passes on a seed of devotional service. You no, know, it is there. So without which the sprouting of Krishna consciousness is not happening. So then why he cannot assume the role of a guru? Why he cannot assume the role of a guru? It's a very, very important question because like many times like uh, we have in the past, we have seen that, you know, some uh, follow person, like he says that, see, like, uh, you know, I am your mentor. That means you should understand, like, no, I am your guru and you should not do anything, you know, without asking me. <laughs> no, I am your all, whole and soul controller of your life, you know. So, <laughs> Bangya Guru. <laughs> and uh, so, the thing is that one should assume the role of a guru if he can, like, absorb the uh, like uh, sins and then if he can destroy all the sins and if he can actually give the tattva darshana you no know? so everybody has some role some role of a guru is there like some kind of a role of a guru is there for the pradakshaka guru and then like different kinds of siksha gurus are there right from you no know, kanishta siksha guru to a very uttama siksha guru so many many different roles are there definitely they are playing a portion of portion of portion of the role of a guru but the real meaning of the guru in the proper sense means that he can, the, first of all, the guru is a tattva darshi. You know, he has seen the absolute truth and he is experiencing the absolute truth, you know, like moment to moment. Like pratikshana, you know, like uh, that is there in the uh, guru ashtakam. You know, pratikshana, aswadana, lolupasya. You know, he is like aswadana, he is actually having intense greed to experience the like uh, association you no know, of the supreme lord you no know, at every moment actually so it is a very very uh, high standard actually so that particular thing when it is there so whatever like uh, karma is there you no know, coming from the disciple so that can be burnt and like still like the guru can give him the proper uh, like uh, direction in the path of krishna consciousness so prematurely one thinks himself no, as a, like a guru who can actually take care of the living entity, unnecessarily he will take the burden of the sins and he will not be able to handle the burden of the sins and he will fall. Like, no, he will actually fall from the path of Krishna consciousness. So that is a problem. So that is why, no, though the like boys who are stepping out and doing the job of giving the seed of Krishna consciousness, so actually they give the seed of Krishna consciousness. So like, uh, but then they should be very careful. So, in fact, one of our devotees were thinking that one of our follow up volunteers as their is Diksha Guru, you know. <laughs> and, and like, no, that boy, like, he was asked, like, no, how did you get this conception? So, then in lecture, I heard so that, you know, the uh, Guru gives the name, you no, know, Guru gives the mantra, and what else? Uh, guru gives the beads, you no. Know? And the person who was following up with me, he only gave me the beads. And he taught me how to chant Hare Krishna Mantra. And he added Prabhu in my name. <laughs> and, you know, so, like, you know, that is such an initiation. Ho gaya. <laughs> so, so, in that way, you know, we see that, you know, like innocent people, so they will, they are looking for Guru. And the moment they see somebody nice and they are nicely talking to us, they will give us the position of Guru. And, like, the this one, immature, like a spiritual master, he thinks that I also become spiritual master. <laughs> no, our, our devotee was quite mature, so he didn't accept it. So sometimes immature people are there. 
you see like this person actually understood you know this person is selling like you are elevated it must be true you know <laughs> though he is not very advanced but still like you no know, this conclusion of his is like you no know, perfect you know i have become guru <laughs> so you now we should see that we should first of all you know very important thing the most important problem in the life of sadaka is that you know we are trying to struggling to find our way you know to become a servant of the lord and the illusion that comes is that you no know, now you have become guru you no know? so actually the people who are really spiritual masters so they are completely grounded in this principle that i am a servant of the supreme lord you no know, rather i am a servant of servant of supreme lord right so that is a very very important principle so when this you no know, concept is grounded nicely no once once somebody has absorbed this principle very nicely so then he will be able to constantly have the darshan of the lord and then he can actually give that particular a servant can make another person servant a person who is so eager to become a boss cannot become a servant and cannot teach another person how to become a servant so it is not possible so it is not logically it is not you no know, possible uh, entity so now we see that these two things are mentioned so like uh, we get the uh, understanding about the spiritual world understanding about the supreme lord by the mercy of a self realized soul and then like we also have certain this ones also one has to get rid of all the material desires as soon as one frees himself from material desires and associates with the liberated person the path back home back to god it is clear so these are two things no we should not clog the system with so much impurities and like the association of saintly persons are very powerful why does association of saintly person is very powerful why it is very powerful which is the actually which is the actual thing which is the purifying agent or nourishing agent no krishna krishna is the actual purifying agent krishna is the actual nourishing agent and why does then saintly person association of liberated persons are uh, like highlighted here so why not directly associate with krishna no you have the names of krishna and you have the deities of krishna so why to take you no know, krishna through some indirect way hmm? like uh, from the devotees so it is mentioned that you no know, devotees are like magnifying glasses devotees are like amplifiers you no know? so current directly if you access only little current will be there if you pass through amplifier you will actually get the proper you no know, this one right so just like you no know, now the whole hall to hear the volume properly we need to have an amplifier you know though i am the source of the uh, like this uh, volume or the speech but still without the help of the amplifier you no know, we will not be able to get the proper this one if a you no know, katha is happening and like far away a speaker is stand you no know, sitting and giving class and by due to some you no know, like improper arrangement there is only one speaker in the end you no know? like a sincere student will st- will try to sit close to the speaker you know <laughs> because he can hear properly you know so in the same way a sincere seeker you no know, rather than approaching the lord directly he will approach a pure devotee of the lord because they are the magnifiers of the lord they are the amplifiers of the lord they can actually you know present the lord in a very very clear way right so that is why we should go and take shelter of such great personalities right so whenever we tell uh, we we go you know out and when we try to uh, deal with various people so that time sometimes we tell that like uh, you see like uh, we should take up to krishna consciousness and propa ji has given nice you no know, literatures and by understanding you no know, like the commentaries of the acharyas you no know, we can actually uh, get closer to the lord and people sometimes people say like no i have very strong connection with the lord i don't need anybody in between you <laughs> know so they think that you no know, any acharya comes in between like it is a far distant relation with the lord and you no know, i am separated you know far away from the lord no actually it is not you know by the uh, mercy of the great devotees we will be able to get the association of the lord in much more better way right so in the next shloka it is mentioned shukadev goswami continued vidura thus offered obeisances unto the great sage maitreya and taking his permission started for the city of astinapur to see his own kinsman although he had no material desires so it is generally seen that people who have material desires they like to live in a family and uh, you know surrounded by relatives and things like that but here vidura great sage and uh, a sadhu by now you no know, he has been established as a sadhu so now uh, like you no know, he is going back home 
after hearing Bhagavatam class. So we have always seen, you know, after hearing Bhagavatam, in Srimad Bhagavatam, we see that like many, many times, like after hearing from a self realized soul, they, you know, Prachina Barhi, you no, know, he quit the home and he went to the forest. And after hearing the story, Vidura, you no, know, he quit the forest and went to home. <laughs> you know, how is it possible? <laughs> it is not possible. So that is why, you no, know, we need to understand the purpose. So when a saintly person wants to see his kinsmen, he has no material desire to see them. He simply wants to give them some instruction so that they can benefit. Vidura belonged to the royal family of Kauravas and although he knew that all the family members were destroyed at the battle of Kurukshetra, he nonetheless went to see the elder brother Dhritarashtra to see if he could deliver Dhritarashtra from the clutches of Maya. When a great saintly person like Vidura sees his relatives, he desires only to deliver them from the clutches of Maya. Vidura thus offered his respectful obeisances to his spiritual master and departed to the city of Astinapur, the kingdom of the Kauravas. So here we see that, you know, Vidura, like uh, he is, uh, you know, going to meet his family members. Uh, so basically to uh, liberate them, to give them Krishna consciousness and also like uh, give them uh, and also to meet the, uh, like the saintly uh, children of Pandu. So the Pandavas, like who were surviving and he had like the Pandavas were very, very eager to receive Vidura and Vidura also was very, very eager to uh, like, uh, you no know, meet the Pandavas actually. So, <coughs> so this uh, nice uh, exchange that happens and after that, like, uh, you no know, Vidura literally chastises Dhritarashtra. You no, know, in fact, uh, this is one of my like very favorite, this one. Uh, just to uh, like uh, you know, create the importance of Krishna consciousness. So Vidura was you know chastising Dhritarashtra, saying that you know like uh, you killed uh, like uh, uh, Bhima killed all your sons, and then you no know, Bhima is actually feeding you, and uh, you know you are just like a dog, you know, ashamed not not having any shame and uh, like having like uh, the food offered by Bhima. And still, Dhritarashtra was peaceful, like, no, nothing. <laughs> and then he was like chastising like anything. And finally, like, it appears like from the sequence of this one, it appears like the final thing which worked was that you see, like, Kaliuga is coming fast, you know, better go to the forest and perform tapasya. And that actually worked. <laughs> and we are so peacefully sitting in Kaliuga. <laughs> and no, Dhritarashtra, like, no, he was uh, like, final Ramban was this, you no, know, Kaliuga is coming. And like, no, everything will become degraded. So like better go to the forest. And no, he agreed. <laughs> For that point, he agreed. <laughs> so no, then uh, like uh, we see that the last shloka, it's a very, very nice shloka and very uh, like uh, nourishing and hope giving kind of shloka. So O King, those who hear these topics about kings who are completely surrendered to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Obtain without difficulty a long life, wealth, good reputation, good fortune, and ultimately the opportunity to return home back to Godhead. Right? So, like we just simply need to hear Bhagavatam every day, like our ticket is booked, you no? Know? So we don't need to do anything else you no know, apart from this. So you no, know, we need to have like one thing, like we need to have the uh, like active desire to attain the shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord. So if we don't have the active desire, so then it is not possible. We need to maintain the desire. And then another aspect that Srila Prabhupada is mentioning that we have to give up the material desires and uh, we have to cultivate spiritual desire. So when we have this you know, apt and fertile environment, so then by exposing our to, ourselves to Srimad Bhagavatam and exposing ourselves to serving of devotees and serving the missionary act activities, so we will be able to make progress. So, but if we don't cultivate this active desire you know, to take shelter of the Lord, so then it becomes difficult. You no, know, we will like uh, the vehicle will go very very slow. You no, know, we will not be able to make tangible progress in Krishna consciousness. So with this, I pause you know, today's discussion. So you no, know, with this also we are finishing the fourth canto. So after this, we will be discussing you no know, from tenth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam um, in the further days to come. So then after Janmashtami, we will start the fifth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Hare Krishna. So any questions, comments? That can share. Hmm? 
yeah so the question is about a person who's not a real guru uh, like uh, then how can he actually take the sins no so it is about the ownership no like you see that uh, why does uh, like uh, parents take the sin of the children no it's because they own the children no the moment i feel that i am the owner of this no particular living entity so then all the no karma actually gets transferred no so that ownership is what actually you know takes the transfer of karma and uh, we see that like when we uh, consider ourselves to be a servant of the lord so then even if the karma comes like it goes to the lord you know it actually lord absorbs the thing so when i become the master whole and soul so then everything stops you know like where the ownership stops the there the passage of karma also stops so it, it is all about like how the living entity feels the ownership you no know, upon another living entity so that's that's the, the whole this one if a person is detached so like in fact if you see uh, in the second second chapter of bhagavad gita uh, like uh, arjuna asked this particular uh, no he at first chapter itself he puts this this one that if we kill these people no sin will come upon us and what is the response that krishna gives for this uh, for this argument for sin will come upon us any idea how to avoid the sin do your duty with detachment no if you are detached then you will not get the sin no you are doing a particular activity based on the instruction of another person so maximum of the sin goes to him no because you acted um, like uh, without proper knowledge no you should have acted according to the scriptures but you acted upon uh, no like uh, on the advice of a, a unintelligent person so some amount of karma comes to you because you have loyally acted upon uh, upon his instruction no all this one goes to him no <laughs> so maximum goes 90% goes to him actually so it is in this way we see that like uh, by practicing the detachment no it is krishna's service that is happening it is the mission of shila prabhupad that is happening and uh, like you know we have to be a servant of them and we have to act according to their instructions and you no know, we have to fulfill you no know, their desire so when we act on this platform so then you no know, all the you no know, since that come the, that actually goes upwards in the parampara and all the previous acharyas we don't need to worry about them so they are very expert in connecting to krishna and krishna we don't need to worry at all like he will neutralize everything he is the ultimate neutralizer <laughs> right so like you no know, if we can pass the buck from us to top that is the we are <laughs> we have done a great job you know so for that we need to be dependent on them no we need to be dependent on them no on our predecessors so then we will be able to pass on no if we don't have dependence on them if we have the courage and faith and you know this one that like no i know everything so then you no know, i have to suffer you no know, for that you no know, i have to get the sin you no know, like whatever i absorb like if i say like no i am the deliverer of this living entity then i have to absorb the sins so if we say like krishna is the deliverer of all the living entities i am just a servant of krishna then krishna will absorb you know that's the equation Right. So you the sin. What is the sin, of- sin means like everything that exists belongs to Krishna, belongs to the Supreme Lord, and He is the rightful enjoyer of everything that exists. So when I try to enjoy the property of the Lord without His sanction, so that becomes sin. Everything created by the God. Where is the sin? Everything is created by God. Everything so, but I I am trying to enjoy the property of God. so the god if the god says like he creates and if he doesn't give any this one like i don't have any idea of this whole creation like whatever way you want you can do so then there is no concept of sin but god says that everything that exists belongs to me no like bhoktara megna tapasham sarva lokam maheshwaram so he says that i am the enjoyer of everything that i have created so then uh, you go against that so then you know we become sinful so krishna has given like uh, the in the scriptures like it is very nicely given like how to deal with this nature you know how to deal with the creation of god so we have to understand scriptures and we have to follow according to that right so just like everything is created by the government the whole city planning is done by the government so then there is no offense you no know, i can just drive as i want i can just go and you no know, pick up anything i want from the market i don't need to pay so then i'll end up in the jail you no know? so i understand that there is a city planning and there is like there is businesses that happen and if i want to have something there is a particular way to make the transaction so if i understand that then i can be a civilian 
so now you no know, god has created everything you no know? so the modern day atheism says that uh, you no know, everything that exists is like for your enjoyment so you can just take and enjoy as you like so then it becomes a problem you no know? they remove the god from the picture so then the remove the rules and regulations that are given by god so then it becomes a like uh, then practically everybody becomes sinful you no know? in fact in the uh, uh, past time of ajamil Uh, so there is a discussion between Vishnu Dudas and Yama Dudas, and Yama Dudas were taking the soul of Ajamal, and the Vishnu Dudas asked, like, uh, no, why are you arresting these people? No, like, uh, who are the sinful people? Can you define sin? And like, who are who are to be taken by the Yama Dudas? So then they say that whatever is mentioned in the scriptures are considered to be the set rules, and anybody deviates from that is sinful. and in general people are sinful no like yamadutha say like wherever we want we just pick up everybody and we go like nobody ask any question like because in general everybody are sinful so only very few you know get this knowledge you know that oh there is the supreme lord exists and it is his property and if i have to use his property i have to consult him and the way to consult him is to study the scriptures you know that's how great personalities great acharyas time and again they have come and they have explained the scriptures and they have no given the impetus for the living entities to follow the scriptures right so that's the way to become proper civilian in the kingdom of god yeah. 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 thank you hmm. so who takes ownership no he takes the sin no so it varies like it varies from you no know, time to time some places the uh, you no know, like uh, in certain conditions like sometimes shiksha gurus also take like uh, you no know, major portion of the this one so it is it is about it is a very very unique relationship between you no know, one living entity to another living entity so it is it cannot be like uh, just made into a, a flat system no it's about the ownership the person actually takes you know krishna takes ultimate ownership he is willing to take ownership but in between a living entity comes and says no no krishna like you wait like no i'll take the ownership and then <laughs> then it becomes a this you know okay. so a pure devotee he takes the ownership based on the ownership of krishna based on the ownership of krishna so that when he becomes a transparent via medium then he becomes a transparent via medium for the sin to also pass on you know like that so and sometimes like he takes you know it is it is a very difficult subject matter to understand so like that is why one very important thing to understand for the uh, sadhakas like uh, especially uh, the devotees who are in the lower rung of devotional service is that we cannot you know handle the force of sin that comes so like uh, by interacting with uh, you know mass of people and that to kaliyuga people you know like they know like left right center they are doing sinful activities right so breaking all the regulatory principles like uh, we cannot take you no know, ownership of that particular thing but we should take that kind of ownership wherein we are also dependent you no know, we have to work on this aspect of we dep- we be- become dependent on the acharya we become dependent on panchatattva so we become dependent on radha and krishna so that is very very essential so when we do that so then the formula is right you know? yes sir no have buying things doesn't mean that uh, you no know, you have become impure so you are going to like you are buying saying that no it is my sweet home and i'll only enjoy i will never invite vaishnavas here i will never offer any you no know, like i'll never conduct any spiritual programs it is no purely meant for my sense gratification so then it becomes you no know, impure so a grahastha devotee like he actually you know, whatever is needed to maintain his livelihood so he just does that thing and then he utilizes it in proper krishna conscious way right so everything that we have to do you no know, krishna has given us the rules and regulations so when we do that thing according to the rules and regulations of the lord then we become you no know, a law abiding citizen you no know? so then we become like uh, it is going to be nice 
no? So, okay. Okay, so it is 9.30. Gantraj Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Gaura Bhakta Vrinda ki jai, Shila Prabhupada ki jai. We will have a quick, funny meeting of uh, Swami Purana and then we will have a question. Before that, let's thank Harish.